It was a foggy October morning on Gosling Farm. Everything was very damp, but Little Red Tractor did not mind. His engine was still warm from driving around the farm doing all the early morning jobs. After breakfast, Stan walked back across the yard. Come on, Little Red Tractor, he said. We've got a fence to mend in Five Oaks Field. Patch sat in Little Red Tractor's cab and watched as Stan loaded the trailer. He put in six fencing posts, two reels of wire, a hammer, a bag of nails, a spade, a pair of wire cutters and a very heavy sledgehammer. Little Red Tractor chugged very slowly down the lane. The fog was so thick he almost missed the gateway to Five Oaks Field. As Stan opened the gate, Patch pushed past him and ran into the field. Oi! shouted Stan. Where are you off to in such a hurry, Patch? But Patch ran on and disappeared into the fog. In Five Oaks Field, Stan kept Little Red Tractor close to the hedgerow. He did not want to get lost in the fog. Little Red Tractor was moving very, very slowly, but seemed to be bouncing up and down much more than usual. This field seems very bumpy this morning, Little Red Tractor, said Stan. An oak tree appeared out of the gloom. Stan turned to the left and counted the trees as they drove slowly past them. One, two, three, Four, five. Little Red Tractor stopped by the dead oak tree in Five Oaks Field. Stan stepped down from the cab and trod on the top of a soft mound of earth. He wobbled, slipped and fell down with a bump. As he lay on the ground, he saw a dark shape. It looked like a small mountain. Then he saw another, and another, and another. Well, I'll be blowed, said Stan. It's the moles. My word, they have been busy. Suddenly, a shower of earth struck him on the back of the head. Some even found its way down the back of his neck. Oi, he shouted. Who's doing that? It was Patch. She was digging up one of the molehills. Stan laughed and said, Stop digging, Patch. You'll never catch them. An hour later, a watery sun began to shine. The fog lifted and Stan could see that almost half the field was covered in molehills. That's a fine crop of molehills you have there, Stan, shouted Mr Jones from Beach Farm as he drove up in Big Fred. Stan smiled and waved. That looks more like a battlefield than a cow field, Stan, shouted Walter from the garage as he stopped his breakdown truck. Stan smiled and waved. Birds hunting for berries in the hedgerow stopped to watch as Stan began to dig out another broken post. A few yards away, Patch was also digging, but Stan was too busy to notice. He had put in four new posts and fixed the wire before Morris the Mole Man drove up. Morris works at a lot of different things. At one time, he owned Jeremy, the friendly old shire horse now living on Gosling Farm. Morning, Stan, said Morris. And how's Jeremy keeping? Very well, thank you, said Stan. Got a lot of moles, I see, said Morris. It's a pity. Spoils a lovely meadow. Stan smiled. He knew that Morris was looking for work. They'll move on soon enough, Morris, he said. The moles have got to live somewhere, and I'm happy to have them. I think they help the soil to breathe. That says maybe, said Morris. But don't you think the grass would look better without them? 
It doesn't bother me, said Stan. The cows will trample the mounds flat, and the grass will soon grow through again. That's if Patch doesn't dig them all up first, laughed Morris. Stan looked round to see that Patch was still digging. Oi, Patch, he shouted. Now, just you stop that. Morris was about to leave when Stan had an idea. I think Mrs Turvey at Blackthorn Cottage might be pleased to see you, he said. Her lawn is covered with molehills. If you follow me, I'll take you across the fields to Blackthorn Cottage in Little Red Tractor. Stan banged a few more nails into the fence to make sure that the new wire was well and truly fixed. Then, with Morris driving slowly behind in his blue van, Little Red Tractor chugged back to the farm. Morris loaded several mysterious-looking bags onto Little Red Tractor's trailer before they set off across the fields. When Little Red Tractor arrived at Blackthorn Cottage, Ryan and Amy, who were still too young to go to school, jumped up and down with excitement. Patch was pleased to see the children. Her tail thumped against the side of Little Red Tractor's cab, but Stan said, Now you stay there, Patch. We don't want you digging up Mrs Turvey's lawn. Mrs Turvey was very pleased to see Morris. Do you really think you can get rid of the moles for me? She asked. No trouble, said Morris. I'll set half a dozen traps. We'll soon get rid of the little dubsters. Oh, dear, said Mrs Turvey. I don't think Ryan and Amy will like it if you trap them. Isn't there something else you can do? Morris thought for a moment. It's a pity, he said. It's the best way to get rid of moles. Ryan and Amy looked very glum. Then Morris gave them a sly grin. But I can move them onto Owlwood Meadow if you like, he said. I happen to know that Stan likes moles in his fields. Stan laughed. I don't mind, he said. The more, the merrier. So, with Stan helping, Morris got busy. First of all, they shoveled all the loose earth into a wheelbarrow and tipped it onto the vegetable patch. Morris carefully prodded with a thin metal rod to find out where the moles had their underground passages. Then he said, What I do next is a mole catcher's secret. You must all turn and face the other way. And close your eyes and keep them tightly shut until I tell you to open them again. They all did as they were told. They heard Morris scurrying about. They heard some mysterious scraping noises. Then they heard a whirring sound which got louder and louder and louder. Then they heard Morris say, you can turn round and open your eyes now. Wow! Windmills! shouted Ryan. Lots of them and all in different colours! squealed Amy. Very nice, said Mrs Turvey. But will it get rid of the moles? Morris smiled. Sure to, he said. Windmills always work as long as you know the mole catcher's secret. But we don't know the mole catcher's secret, said Ryan. You made us turn away. Ah, said Morris, tapping the side of his long nose with his long forefinger. But the moles don't know that. Mrs Turvey paid Morris for his help and said, Oh, uh, by the way, Stan, we've got an oak sapling that's grown from an acorn. It's too big for our garden. You couldn't find a space for it, could you? 
I've got just the spot for it, said Stan. It would be a shame to waste such a fine young oak tree. Morris helped Stan dig up the tree. Then, with Morris holding on to it, Little Red Tractor drove back to Gosling Farm. Back at the farm, Stan asked Morris to tell him the mole catcher's secret. Morris gave a crafty smile and tapped the side of his nose again. He thanked Stan for putting some business his way and, with a cheery wave, drove off down the lane. Later that afternoon, Stan drove Little Red Tractor back to Five Oaks Field. Stan looked up at the dead oak tree. Well, what do you think, Patch? he said. Shall we chop it down and plant the sapling in its place? But Patch wasn't listening. She was still digging for moles. Stan leant against Little Red Tractor and watched and listened. There was a green woodpecker clinging to the old tree. A squirrel peeped out from behind one of the high branches. A rabbit popped out from a burrow at the bottom of the tree. And the old tawny owl who lived in the tree broke her afternoon nap to open one eye and stare down at them. Stan patted Little Red Tractor on the bonnet. Well, Little Red Tractor, he said, I think we should leave the old oak tree where it is, don't you? Little Red Tractor felt happy as he chugged along the hedgerow looking for another place to plant the young oak tree. They came to a gap in the hedge where Patch was busy digging up yet another molehill. This looks a good place, said Stan. Carry on digging, Patch. I can use that hole to plant this fine young oak tree in. And that is exactly what he did. I wonder what the real Stan is going to do today. He's driving his big red tractor. Is he going to do some ploughing? But he can't plough in the middle of a wood, can he? No, of course not. So, what is he up to? Have you guessed yet? That's right. He's going to plant some trees. Farmers plant trees to create windbreaks and woodland areas where birds and other wildlife can flourish. Today he's filling gaps in an area that he planted last year. The hole must be deep enough to take the roots of this oak sapling. Now, what is this? Why is Stan wrapping it around the tree? It's a tree guard. This protects the tree from rabbits who love gnawing through the bark of tender young trees. The stake supports the tree and stops it from falling over. These are trees that Stan planted last year. He's checking to see how much they have grown. It takes many years for trees to grow to full size.
So, all this planting will make the countryside a better place in the future. But while these trees are growing, they will provide a natural home for all kinds of wildlife. Stan is going home for his tea while the trees get on with the slow process of growing and growing. <laughs>